You are listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast, where we believe the Bible is sufficient and answers life's problems. I'm your host, Pastor Jeff Christensen. This podcast is for everyone in the body of Christ, staff pastor, church leader, caring homemaker, the responsible businessman, everybody. But it's also for my Calvary Chapel University students. Shout out, hello to you guys. All of us are called to offer counsel regularly. And we every day need a word of counsel from the Lord. So these episodes are designed to assist you in learning to give godly counsel. Also to develop discernment in evaluating counsel that you receive. So it's my prayer that these podcasts, that these episodes will enlarge your vision of the Lord Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Let's get started. See you on the inside. We are living in just absolutely crazy times, aren't we? You know, we're to be renewing our mind, and so often we're letting the world infect and affect the way we think. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing of the mind by the word of God. That's how we help those that we disciple, those that we counsel. When we care for souls, when we're curing a soul or being a soul care, biblical counseling, disciple-making, Bible-believing, on-fire Jesus people, we want to help people and help them renew their mind by pointing them to the Scripture. We're to be transformed. And I need to be transformed, so do you. And as we, as biblical counselors, as disciple makers, as church leaders, want to help others, this is one item or one word of God, one passage of Scripture that helps us understand these things. The renewing of the mind, it's a biblical issue. And we should give it consistent attention When we live for Christ and Christ lives in us and when we are doing personal ministry, just learning to think God's way. I mean, I used to think and fill my mind with man's way of thinking and it bombards me every day. Whether I'm, (laughs) whether I'm even in the midst of God's people at church on a Sunday morning, man's way has infected and infiltrated the body of Christ, but it's also Everywhere you go in the culture, anywhere you go, it's all over the place. And before I was born again, before you were born again, we filled our ways, our minds with the the world's way of thinking, humankind's way of secular, humanistic thinking. And without the renewing of the mind, we have to be renewed and changed into what God wants us to be. So we grow. It's a transforming day by day by grace work of God. It impacts us in our minds and then works itself out in our experience in every area of our life. So why do our minds need to be renewed? Well, Ephesians chapter 4 tells us, I mean, you know, think about this. This I say, therefore, Ephesians 4, 17, this I say, therefore, Paul is saying this, this is desperate, listen, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentile, Gentiles walk. He's saying, stop it. <laughs> you know, don't walk that way. Because why? They're in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardening of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to licentiousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's what Paul said to the Ephesians about the unredeemed mind in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 19. This is why everybody's mind, the human mind, needs to be renewed. Let me read that again. 
We should not walk the way the world walks, the Gentiles, the unredeemed humanity, because they are walking in the futility of their mind. Their understanding is darkened. They're alienated from the life of God, being because of ignorance that is in them, because of the hardening of their heart, their past feeling. They've given themselves over to licentiousness, and they work on all uncleanness with greediness. It's accurate. It's an accurate description of humanity without God, without the knowledge of God. I mean, think of these things that characterize the thinking of people that are without Christ around us in my life prior to Jesus. I, this describes me and beyond and even worse. You know, Jeremiah talks about the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? I, I was so bad that I didn't even know my own heart. And it wasn't until I was born again and began to see my mind renewed that my mind was opened or that my thinking was clear enough to understand I was in a bad place. And so were you. And so are those that we are counseling and those that we are helping. And there was no spiritual enlightenment. I could not comprehend God. I was isolated from the life of God. And that's where insight comes from. So without it, I'm just stumbling around in the dark. And in us, in me, in you, dwelled this spiritual ignorance, it says in Ephesians chapter 4. The very inner core of our being would resist the things of God, the things of heaven, the things of eternity. I was calloused. We were calloused to the very convicting work of the Spirit of God. And I committed, really, I was indulgent. I was licentious. I didn't have any restraint, no godly restraint. I went all in for Satan and the world and the flesh and the devil. And it was bad. It was ugly. It was covetous motivations. I had pursued profanity. I, <laughs> you know, it was just desperate. And there, really, listen to this. Maybe you relate. Check this out. There was no way. I was unredeemable. I was bad as it gets running around Southern California in my 1969 Chevelle all hopped up with a, you know, pause the traction rear end with my three inch exhaust and hooker headers with my Edelbrock uh, high rise intake manifold, Holly 650 double pumper carburetor, a crane uh, camshaft, roller rockers. I had a double roller timing chain on that Chevy 350 with a turbo hydromatic 400 with the shift kit transmission. I mean, that thing screamed. It was dangerous. And I got in a lot of trouble in that midnight metallic blue 69 Chevelle with subwoofers and a hard rock sound system cranking Aussie in the 1980s and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and Black Sabbath and cruising all over the place, getting in a lot of trouble, throwing beer cans out the window in L.A., you know, in Orange County, Riverside County, San Bernardino. I was all over the place. And when I read this passage of Scripture about how desperately I needed a new way of thinking, it was only... Jesus Christ, that could redeem me, that could change me, that could transform me. So when I talk about biblical counseling, when I talk about discipleship, when I talk about the sufficiency of the Word of God, you got to remember, my life was bad. And I read a Gideon's Bible all alone after indulging in a week of partying, and I was born again with an incorruptible seed that was planted in my heart by the Word of God. It transformed me. It changed my life, and I've got to tell other people, and that's what I'm doing here on this podcast, and I've been, thank you, Jesus, it's been uh, close to 30 years now since I lived that lifestyle, and, you know, though I still need to be renewed, the renewing of the mind never goes away, 
I'm a new creature in Christ. You know, therefore, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And yet there has been pumped into my physical brain by the old man when I was once in Adam, memories of the old life logged into my brain, influences my perspective 30 years later, the values, the priorities learned in the days before Jesus became my Lord and Master can cloud my evaluations. And I want to please and serve the Lord and wandering thoughts easily drift into unwholesome areas. Worldly thinking over those years that I lived without Jesus Christ. So, I have to be on guard to be regularly in the Word of God, regularly in prayer, regularly in fellowship, a lot of times sharing my faith, being in the midst of God's people all the time, constantly. I think that's one of the reasons God, you know, called me, gifted me to be a pastor, teacher, biblical counseling, uh, Bible teaching, academic guy sometimes, sometimes just one-on-one with the everyday believer. I think God wanted to keep me close to him, so he called me into the ministry because I make a disaster of my life. Although it's been 30 years, I still uh, don't like, uh, you know, what that lifestyle was, and I wish it never happened, but it did, and I think the Lord, my kids don't go through that like I did. It's kind of almost like in this tent, I had a previous tenant living in here, the old man in Adam, and he painted the walls of my brain with this gross, self-centered, flesh-indulgent photos or murals or paintings and then I'm born again and that old tenant got kicked out of this physical tent and I need to do a major redecorating and it's taken 30 years and it's still ongoing a a repainting and all of a sudden the paint peels and there I see that old mural and I have to learn to think God's way over and over and over again it's a renewing of the spirit of the mind And that's what needs to be renewed is a mindset. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 says, we're to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of our minds involves just a framework, overall framework of thinking, a a disposition, a focus, you know, the controlling perspective of my mind. I'm telling you right now, I have a biblical worldview. That's what controls me. And Because of my history and the transformation that God has made, I am committed to helping others do the same. So are you. That's why you're listening to this podcast. You're committed to helping care for souls, to cure souls, to be a biblical discipleship, counseling church leader. And This is how we do it, is first of all, we're changed. We're changed in the spirit of our mind. Our our thinking has changed. And now we're walking in the way God has intended. We're restored. The years the canker worm is eaten, God is restored. And so those old things, I had to look at them just now. I forget the things that lie behind I don't dwell on the past. That stuff's over. That stuff's gone. That's in my rearview mirror. I learn from it, yes, but I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing upward. I'm pressing into the Lord, and so are you. So when people come and they are hungry, eager to know him and respond to him, their mindset has changed. Their desires have changed. They acknowledge that God exists. They want to become more in love with him or learning about him and knowing more about him. That's the spirit of the mind, that they want to please God. And that's how we help people. You know, when people don't want that, I can't help them. If they're not interested in being renewed and pleasing God and 
being fired up for Jesus, I simply can't help them. I'll send them to somebody else, and then when they're desperate enough or they're hungry enough or they really want to know God, I'm the guy that will help them grow. I love to work with people that are hungry to know God, that know that God exists. They're, they yearn to become one who loves him with all their being. And that the spirit, any other spirit of the mind needs to be renewed. And if they're not willing to go through the what it takes to be renewed, I have to just pass them over to other pastors. There's a lot of great pastors out there that like to deal with lukewarm Christianity. And I don't know how else to describe it. But people that kind of are like ho-hum, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. I am not equipped or called to minister to that person. Now, I'll draw them toward Christ, and if they reject that uh, direction, I say, hey, come back. Come back another time when you're hungry. Because I love to pour in to a hungry disciple. And in my personal ministry and counseling, um, it's not really the circumstance or the issue that's dominating their attention. They got this narrow issue they're dealing with. Really, I want to see them renew the basic way they think, the basic mental framework, the spirit of their mind, that controlling perspective of the mind of humanity. If it's wrong, every other matter will be clouded. The reason they come for counseling is not going to be solved if I solve their problem without their mind being renewed. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of, the, of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so when somebody is that foolish, despising wisdom and instruction, I turn them back over. Get in the back of the line, because I got a long line of people that want discipleship and counseling. I'm only one guy. And so I have to say, go to the back of the line. When you're on fire, when you're hungry, when you're desperate, come to the front of the line. I'll work with you. But in the meantime, that's who I'm pouring into. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And unless the spirit of our mind, that basic thought pattern, mental disposition includes if they're not respectful, reverent, if they don't acknowledge the Lord God Almighty, I can't even begin to operate. They can't begin to operate in any real knowledge and wisdom because that's what the Bible teaches. And I'm at a loss. And that's why secular, uh, that's why a lot of Christian counselors mix in secular psychology because they deal with the nominal Christian. And, you know, secular psychology will help a nominal Christian cope, give them coping mechanisms, and help them feel better about their sin or feel better about their foibles or feel better about themselves. But it won't get to the root and the heart of the issue. They need to be on fire for Jesus Christ. So we need to renew the mind. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, um, it's not just the mindset, it's our entire thinking. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to renew the spirit of our minds, as Ephesians says, but every aspect of our mind, not being conformed to this world, we need to be transformed. There's nothing limiting here. It's entire, all-encompassing renewing of the whole mind and avoiding conformity to the world. That's the problem with secular psychology. That's the problem with psychology, psychotherapy in general. Freudian, B.F. Uh, BF Skinner, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, you know, we we gobble that stuff up if, as humans. 
and it's contrary to the word of God, and it drives me crazy that good, otherwise solid, Bible-believing, mature Christians gobble up uh, this hierarchy of needs thinking. It's so contrary to the Scripture. And so whether it's uh, uh, Carl Rogers, Rogerian-style counseling, uh, any of the secular modalities that are out there, they're usually based in either B.F. Skinner behavior modification, some some Abraham Maslow mixed in, a little bit of Freudian thinking, a little bit of Carl Rogers, uh, Adler, uh, uh, what's the other Carl? Carl Jung, uh, the other gurus that have laid the foundation to secular psychotherapy that rejects God. Yet now there are there is such a a variety, but most people learned at the feet of these brilliant uh, gurus, these humanistic thinkers, and then everybody has formed the newest styles of psychotherapy and 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 counseling theory but nothing's really changed nothing's new under the sun it's all um contrary to the word of god look at it and if you find anything in there that's biblical hey people can stumble across truth from time to time but that doesn't mean it's informed by the scripture it just happens to have a little bit of flavor because people observe humanity and god writes about humanity and so we got to just throw that out the door and go to the Word of God instead of having the world shape us by their external pressures. We're to have our lives be made increasingly, genuinely renewed and new by the renewing of our minds. It's a process is an internal working of God himself. It's through the word of God, by the Holy Spirit of God, the Lord gives us an entire new way to think. And then the more we learn to think the Lord's way in all of the areas of our life, to whatever degree we're being transformed, it's how God renews us. And then we have a whole new heavenly understanding and values and priorities. And and then not only that, but the the wherewithal, the resource to go and live that way. So sad. Many Christians have never had their lives significantly changed. You can't tell the difference between how they live now and how they live before Christ. And that's sad. And they live the same way they did when they were dead in trespasses and sins, just living by their wits and their self-made lives, and their confidence in themselves, and not in God. And it's because of this text right here. Their minds are not being renewed. And that's what I find. You know, they're holding on and living by their old way of thinking. And so they persist in thinking, acting, talking, conversing, deciding, as they've always done. And so they're not having their minds renewed renewed they're stagnant and they're not in a well probably because they're not in a spiritual place where their minds can be renewed the passage tells us we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy separate to god they're not living sacrifices they're not they're not (laughs) setting their selves apart and so when you come across a person that you're trying to help that you're trying to disciple This passage, we haven't even scratched the surface of it. We can keep going. We're out of time. But we're to begin evaluating a person. Where are they at in their mind, in their the basic framework of their thinking? Has their mind been renewed? And then this is a place to start. This is how you help them. You begin by giving them the principles of the word of God. Hey, listen. We've got to run, but I hope this was helpful. Memorize that passage of Scripture. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 should be memorized by every biblical counselor. And that's something you're thinking about when you sit down. You don't blast people and, 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 you know, hit them over the head with this verse. 
But you're thinking, okay, they need their mind renewed. And then you gently, lovingly, carefully, prayerfully, incrementally, day by day, by God's grace, help them renew their mind by pointing them to Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God. Now, if somebody doesn't, if they resist that, if they're hard-hearted, if they're stiff-necked and they don't want to, put them in the back of the line. Say, hey, come back to me, you know, with prayer, with love, send them on their way and say, come back to me when you're ready to dive into the Word of God and to know Jesus and then to make him known and to be a disciple because he can't help everybody. And there's some people, I'm telling you right now, you're going to run across this. If you've done any biblical counseling for any amount of time, there are going to be people that just are not willing to have their mind renewed. They just want to stay stuck and stagnant. And you really can't help them. It's got to be a work of the Spirit of God. And I hope this was helpful. Give me a shout out. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me that you've been listening to the podcast. It would be great to connect. Give me a shout out. Send me a text. Send me an email. Send me a message on Instagram. Talk to you later. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. You can learn more at jeffchristensen.org. That's jeffchristensen.org. And be sure to share this podcast with a friend. Well, may the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.